It's hard to understand the concept of a resource-based economy. You can't, if we were just to implement that now and leave the infrastructure and the way the cities are designed, they say, oh, it wouldn't work. That's why the whole circular city idea has to be implemented in order for a resource-based economy to work. You can't just do patchwork. You know, when I talk to anyone about ideas and things that we could do, like putting abrasive in the roads, stuff all being slippery and wet, um, building an integrated transport system, the geothermal, the structures that can tap into into uh, the mountains, uh, sorry, mountains, volcanoes to get the energy from volcanoes. When we talk about these kind of things, what is it? Well, I know what the answer is, but what think to yourself? What what would be the ultimate thing that you'd say? Well, that can't. We can't do that. What is the thing that holds us back? It's always the same thing. It is always people say it's too expensive, it costs too much. There isn't the money to achieve that. So our problems are not. Our problems are not resource or technical or manpower it is just always the money situation that holds us back um, I mean I have my own questions what would we do with all the weapons say say the whole world adopted a resource based economy like the Venus project built circular cities all over the world connecting them all up to a international free transport system so you could be anywhere in the world these like Meglav trains or the the ones that take you across the oceans go under the suspend I think thirty meters or something like that above the below, you know above the seabed so there's no there's no you don't get any weather issues or tidal or anything like that down there or wave um, but yeah you can be anywhere in the world in sort of three hours three or four hours. But yeah, when I think about if that was if that system was implemented, what would we do with all the what do we do with all the arms, all the weapons of the world? Do we are they? I mean, do we, does each individual person be given a firearm to? I know it sounds a bit crazy, but like to defend himself against any external force probably wouldn't be any good anyway. In the greatest respect to. Mankind, if there was something that came from out there to do us harm, I don't think as much machine guns going to do, to be fair, or pistol or anything. So, what do we do? We melt them all down, and is there something we? I suppose, yeah, all the metals and everything can be reused. I'm just listening to Venus Project London lecture, October two thousand and nine, and it's. Uh, the question and answer section. It's hour, one hour, four minutes long. And it's been good listening to Fresco, even with like young intellectuals, and there's an older gentleman currently standing up at the moment. But yeah, it's been good listening and the questions that have been asked, um, what the people's main concerns are, and people that have listened to my videos may be worried about this themselves. Is what do we do? If we're taking inventory of the world and we implement these this cybernetics where computers manage the resources, you know, only in terms of what needs to be produced in what areas, etc. If the computers or the or the um, inventory that we do determines that we have not enough resources to care for the planet, what happens with that? And it's almost people are concerned, like because it's a built integrated system, the machines automatically start cutting people off and things like that to, you know, to make the balance to to quite create equilibrium again. But that's not the case at all because the machines have no emotions. They will just inform. They will say there's not enough food in this area. They will not make a it's still people are still going to ultimately say okay. So when we can't. With our current means of farming and growing f food, we currently don't, you know, that's, that infrastructure is not supporting the entire planet. So we're looking to grow things out at sea, 
hydroponics on a larger scale. Um, Fresco designed these massive towers where they're just each floor is an in like tomatoes, cucumbers, and, and it's like a great big sort of hydroponic integrated water system where everything sort of like flourishes down. It's very, it's very good. I've seen, you know, I've, I was very impressed by that design. Um, so we can do things like that. There are ways we can't just sort of, you know, it's not a computer decision to turn around and say there's not enough food. There's not enough of anything. We will look, you know, the Germans were cut off from the rest of the world during World War Two, and they made their own rubber. There's, you know, human being, mankind can do anything it sets its mind to, and therefore, as I say, the computers will just literally inform what the problem is. They will not. They will not start wiping people out. Um, what was the other? What's the other main concerns been? I was signed top. Yeah, a lot of people were concerned that scientists would just literally take over, and this would be a Scientology of some kind. And it's it's not because, as Fresco explained, when everyone has access to all the things they need, and they live in. I mean, he used this thing that he said that every, you know, most everyone in the world now, well, most people in the Western world now live better than the kings of the old age. You know, they got air conditioning in the car, mobile phone, TV, all the, all, everything that we got, we do. We live better than the lords and the kings of the medieval times and beyond, and people in the 15th and 1600s. We live, we live far better than that. So. I think the point being is that you're trying to sort of. It's very difficult, difficult because we always feel that man tries to, um, you know, man woman tries to gain advantage over each other, and yeah, of course we do in a monetary system. That's given, isn't it? Really, that we're all chiselling off each other in one way or another, even though we're quite, we can generally be quite respectable to each other, if. You know, yeah, I just think that we, we need to understand that, that it's the societal conditions that create the behaviour and not and it's not a natural thing. It's not human nature to be this way and want, want to grab everything you can with both hands. If you're provided for and well looked after and everyone around you is in the same position and there's no hierarchy, no one's above or below you, then I think your behaviour changes and your your um, your outlook on life will change as well. You'll see new incentives will, will arise. Just on another little thing uh, that he said as well, that always used to... It, a man has got a way of words and it is just quite fascinating to listen to him talk when he said about... Let me get his words right. If it rained gold dust, if it rained gold, like gold dust, for the 24, you know, in 24 hours it started raining gold, people would be out in the streets, they'd be filling up their pockets, they'd, you know, they'd be shoveling it into the house, filling up their drawers and all sorts. If that went on for, if it rained for a month, people would be shoveling it back out of the house, taking off their rings and their jewellery and everything, and chucking it. Chucking it away, it would have no value, would it? So, I think that was just a little lesson in what you attribute wealth and value to. Um, I think I covered that, I did cover that, I believe, in, a, in one of my other videos about the whole how they've done that with the diamonds. <clears throat> how diamonds were ma manipulated to become, or still become, a valuable commodity because of scarcity when really there's there's entire there's entire vaults out there full of the brim of them so they're not scarce and they burn them as well that's the thing there's so many of them they burn them but um yeah I'm just trying to think of the other things that he talks about as well what, or what other people's concerns are yeah, I've got questions myself that I would have loved to have asked him, I'm not 100% clear, 
in certain aspects of it and it's more the technical side of things you know the materials used for certain things I'm not and that's why I suppose I would need to not get the blueprints but get a little bit more of the then he must have very in-depth well yeah blueprints I suppose he would have sort of detailed information Um, yeah, specifications and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but I'm not a technician or an engineer, but I suppose that's, that will be down to those that come in on the program. And I'll leave that side of it down to them. I'm going to be more of a sort of labourer mapping out and, you know, putting in the footpaths and planting trees and all that sort of thing, digging out channels to put all the under all the pipe in for the heated pavement like that's another thing that I found fascinating he was using things like so the sun beats down I mean think about how much sun beats down all the surface area across here and he just says uh, use um, PVC tubing or uh, there was two or three different other types you can use as well but yeah he was saying about when the sun hits the ground it warms the water um, and the houses were the aluminum coated houses were amazing because like the sun would hit down the house and it would cool it in the cool it in the day and then during the evening you'd have like a, a, waft, a, a waft a warm soft glow and then you could even choose like what colour it was going to be as well so it'd be like a Siri kind of thing like Siri make my glow blue well we you know you wouldn't call it Siri but just to give you an idea but yeah, there's only so much I can, only so much of an image I can paint by using words. You need to <coughs> look at the, look at things like, um, well, just type in the Venus Project and you'll get all sorts of videos coming up for that. And just look at the, what he, what he, what he did was build models of the cities and all that and then just use like high definition cameras to sort of film all the objects and film as you're like moving your way through the city it's good and I don't know initially it's very it might overwhelm there's a lot there's a lot to, there when you see it you think ah oh, so so such a stretch so far away but it's not really it's not I think we're cap more than capable of it and another thing that's funny like this live lecture that he's doing now that I'm watching um, because he's hard of hearing, this is done like he must be like still 91, 92 here, and yeah, he's hard of hearing. And a guy asks a question, and Roxanne Meadows, his partner, says, uh, "We could have built this in 1927," and then and then sort of whispers in Jack's ear what the what the question is, and that's the first thing he said, "We could have built this in 1927." The whole crowd, like the whole set at London University so it's not like just you know some sort of like backstreet theatre or anything like that podium or whatever but yeah so there everyone's sort of like laughing and he does it seems like he's got a great rapport with the audience and that he has a, has a way of communicating with people even though what he's saying is quiet people can get really easily offended because it is you know, sort of questioning all the things that you know and you've held true most of your life the day-to-day -day language that we use and everything he just sort of you know why do we say have a good evening or have a good day why don't we say have a good life but if someone said have a good life it's all it's an offense we've now turned that into actually almost being offended to something like it's someone sort of saying oh fuck you you know oh, yeah whatever have a good life you know as if to say I don't want no more communication with you. That's not what saying to someone have a good life. Life is literally one hour to the next. It's all life, isn't it? Whether you see someone a week later, a month later, a year later, whatever it be, it's all it's all life. So I mean, that's it's not important, but it's just a, it's just little things like that, and in the whole general, you know, hello, how are you sort of thing that he says, and then, and then he just. 
he creates these little scenarios so bear with me I'm trying to sort of relay that to you that he's you know Jack, this is Jack and he's just like someone says oh hello how are you and you go um what's so good I've got you know I've got, I'm not well and I need three thousand dollars for for um for an operation can you help me with that and then they say oh, no and he's like well, why, why are you asking her then? <laughs> just, it, it just cracks me up I know it's like that would come across really rude but we all do it every day all right all right morning hello how are you yeah and it's not like you aren't you're not really nobody waits for the response really and everyone expects just to yeah i'm all right i'm okay and i've been in situations where people have, have gone morning you're okay or whatever at work or whatever and and i've not been in a good place and i'm just like ah, it's really difficult don't, we can't hide it sometimes I can't hide it sometimes and I'm just like nah I'm not good but you don't want to oh, it's a difficult one you don't want to become across like a, a depressive or anything like that it's, but at the same time if people can't cope with the response why ask the question are you really asking someone are they okay because you care or because of that politeness of you don't want to come across rude so yeah, there's all these like little little daily languages and things things that we do. Um, yeah, I was just sort of like thinking about just momentarily thinking about all these like activist groups that speak out, you know, for like you know women's rights and. All the, you know, you've got like the hundred sex agenda, for, not agenda, the hundred sex gender identification thing now, and it's just sort of like it's almost like we want to create more issues amongst people and divide people more and more. That's the wrong direction to go in. The whole idea was to break down the boundaries and just say, you know, if we've got to start being, if you need a whole education on people's gender because there's a hundred different associations about gender now this is you know the world hasn't got time for that I'm sorry you identify with whatever you want to identify with but to me you're either a man or a woman or you're a man trying to become a woman or vice versa or whatever you're you're gay you're bi whatever I don't it, it's got no concern it, it's got no relevance people are starving um and yeah, just on that as well, when people sort of say to me about the whole thing of, yeah, but what if there isn't enough resources on the planet and this system highlights that and then we've got a problem where we've got that problem already. We've got three billion people starving, yeah, or, or they're going, they're living on less than a dollar a day. So your system doesn't work. What you currently have, it's all right for us, most of us living in England, America, and all that, you know, we're in it. With the governing modules of like how society should be run, but we we shouldn't be because we're 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 sucking up all the world, all the world's resources. We've got you know crime and murder rates are out of control. Prison rates are out of fucking out of capacity. We've got terrible health, really. To be fair, you know more people, more hospitals we need to build. What is a sign? That is a sign of more is bad health you know we say we need more doctors we need, we mean we need more nurses yeah the population is increasing so that would increase but when you're in needing more doctors and more nurses that generally says that your public is your, your general public is not healthy your population is not in a good state of health so that's not a good sign to keep needing doctors and nurses and <coughs> Yeah. Well, it's just I don't apart from apart from like little small things that we're doing in terms of discovery, medical science and technology, everything else is not is really not moving in the right direction. It's just or it's misguided or it has some kind of underlying sinister purpose and it's usually the monetary system that's tied in with it that creates that problem. 
And yeah, that's all I was trying to get at earlier, is we don't, the system we have now isn't catering for everyone, but there's no talk of change, there's no entertainment of that. People just seem to be quite, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't, I've become a little bit, I used to be, you know, yeah, you get people that say, oh, you're, there's like people that are optimistic and pessimistic, and I'll, this is usually like, people were saying about how they can't really relate to people that are sort of glass half full or glass half empty kind of characters. And I thought when I'm good, I could, you know, we could all sit here and, and take positives from things and give a really lovely video about some good things that are going on in the world, but let's not be delusional about the severity of the problems that we have at hand, you know, this this not, you know, being optimistic or that, about it always is a little bit burying your head in the sand and not addressing the issues. No, sorry, I'm trying to sort of like, I'm half listening to him and trying to do this at the same time, I'm trying to do so many things at the moment. Um, but yeah, I know it's hard to, I mean maybe people don't want, want anything really, maybe that is the problem, there isn't enough, there isn't enough um, turmoil in people's lives and it's, it's not great, I think everyone knows it could be better, but to, but to try and chase a better life through the monetary system and just like, oh I'm going to get famous or I'm going to make my money somehow, and then, you know, I'll have everything I need, I'll be really healthy, I'll have the best health care. Yeah, okay, whatever, you want to strive and achieve that, but you're not going to... When the walls come crashing around you, when the rest of the world comes closing in, because America and, and England have, you know, built themselves on such a pedestal of wealth, what are they going to do? You push the red button, and well, that's not red button, but what they're going to do, drop the nukes, and then come out to a scorched radiate, you know, earth for radiation. What have you won? You won nothing. So, and that's, that's what really, I mean, if, if I was to write a letter now to the Prime Minister of the UK, and not write a letter, but actually send an actual um, a document of the whole idea of the Venus Project, and then just basically asking that they take this to the UN and bring NATO on, but everything you know, bring the whole world under under one. Um, what do they call that when they like the summit sort of thing when they do like a you know, they get all the organisate all the countries together, or most of them, and they hold a massive summit, <clears throat> and then yeah, put that idea out there. It wouldn't be entertained for a second. Now, think about that in itself. You're suggesting the whole world coming together under a resource-based economy, using the best technology and science, all the science, all the best scientists in the world, sending everyone allowing everyone to go back to school to educate themselves in whatever they want and this sort of ties in with just like what, what we do with the gangs and everything I think you've got to approach them and ask them prior to being a gangster what do you want to do and if they don't know then you say well here's a whole whole array of subjects what you're interested in do you want to, you know and we'd, I'd like to think and this is what Fresco says we've got to start being generalists not specialists in things it's, that's where the waste comes in just doing one particular thing in your whole life he said we need people to look into all aspects of things you know um, sociology engineering agriculture be a generalist, be covering all aspects, physics, everything. So yeah, we need to ask these youngsters what do they want to do, what's their fulfilment, when you take money and all that away, and the drugs, well, or legalise the drugs, so there's no gangs and all that, what they're going to, what we're going to have for these displaced youngsters, and we're going to, we're going to need to fulfil their, 
their first, you know, and I think through when they start seeing the things that we can produce, nanotechnology and the creativity that's going to come, I think that will, I don't think they want to be doing what they're doing deep down. Um, so yeah, that concerns me in the respects that you could present that idea to the, to the leaders of the world. You know, you could take it to Trump and say, we want this, this is what we want. It wouldn't happen. And that's, if, if you, even if you now watching this are saying to yourself, yeah, he's right. He's right, the governments of the world would not incorporate this idea. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why they will not want the human race to come together under one banner. No nations anymore. No, in, no immigration, no nations. You can live where you want, no war. No weapons, no one can kill or take over anything. No social stratification, whether you're a scientist or whether you're doing, you know, an arts and crafts person and you're just putting things in, in public display for people to appreciate and enjoy what, you know, human <laughs> creativity, even though there isn't really any, anyway, was, as I was saying earlier, being creative is just being a creative mind of somebody you can just extract from different points of reference. Um, yeah, I'll write that up there now. It just sort of comes from me watching this interview with him and uh, I don't want to be one of these people that just, you know, I'll, somebody said to me, oh, is this what you're doing now then with your life? Is it you're just like preaching to people? Well, I'm not preaching. I'm just talking, sharing my thoughts. And I don't want, I don't look at it. Like, I don't look at Jeff Fresco like a god or anything like that. I just respect what he's... I not respect, I understand what he says, I relate to it. I've known for many years of my life that things wasn't right, but I never had any sort of clear understanding of where that was coming from or what direction I wanted, wanted that to go in. And yeah, I suppose it's just like a, a shining light, really. That's all it is, but... Fucking tower. Nobody should put so much into someone. Um, yeah, no, you know, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have a leader in your life. Anyone that leads you anywhere, you should. You can have people you. Ex I think you should be extensional to, and you can really sort of get get great ideas from, and, and joy and happiness, and all those things, and you can really sort of relate to someone, have a good connection, but then it's, it's always, I think it's good to have your own sovereignty and your own independence and be able to stand firm by yourself really and hold up to your own ideals and ideas of, th of things and, you know, educate yourself so that you're not, you're not waiting for somebody else to educate you. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd just leave this one here now actually to be fair. If something else comes to mind, I'm just going to keep adding to it. I'm just going to—I might try and chop and cut these about a little bit to, <coughs> excuse me, to give you a little bit of a <coughs> bit more of a clear understanding because I've been very, very sporadic and very sort of all over the place with my train of thought. But it does—it just comes out. These little things just pop into my mind. You know, we've all got lives to lead. I've got things to do. And whilst I'm doing those things, certain certain things just pop up, and and that's what allows you know. And then I'm generally not in a position to make a note of them. So yeah, this just come off of that really. But yeah, I'm trying to stay positive. It is difficult, very really difficult. I think there's going to be a lot of objection to this, and to think these ideas from the Venice Project were presented sort of well over 10 years ago now and I'm at, on, like in terms of social through social media like YouTube and things like that um, but yeah I need to get a little bit more on board and sort of sign up again and well, not sign up again but sign up and <clears throat> sort of try and maybe yeah get them to view my channel and maybe they can push that and 
I think what they're doing at the moment, their general thing is they've got, you know, Fresco's passed away now, he's left off, I imagine he's left all the land and the 10 buildings that they have got to Roxanne and it's based in Venus in Florida. And they're trying to build a resource centre, you know, and I just, I don't know if that's their right direction. They're trying to raise 50, it's going to cost 15 million to do that. And that concerns me that, oh, I suppose really all I'm doing is recreating what they're doing. But I don't, I don't know, I don't think it should cost that much. I mean, I don't know how, they must be building one hell of a fucking resource centre for it to cost that kind of money. Um, but yeah, I mean, I should get on board and try and support that as much as I can. It's difficult. Time is very much of a of an issue. Oh, I fucking tell. I'm gonna smash it. So I'm gonna leave this here now because uh, because that tower is really starting to annoy me, and I'm sure it's bugging you as well. But yeah, look after yourself, guys, and just take care and try and do everything you can to promote this idea. I come from a good place, you know. I'm not. There's nothing sinister going on here. There's. This is not about trying to control you or anything like that I just want the best for mankind and I want us to progress and I want to reap the benefits of that system as well alright, peace out